welcome back to my channel sports fans okay let's get into this one right here the nba continues to prove my point that this is not a real sports league right they continue to make it concrete evidence that this nba is just for entertainment it's not a real sports league right and we talked about that yesterday but today they came out with the top 10 rankings I think it was 100 players in the NBA. They just came out with the rankings. And yesterday, a lot of people was appalled, right? Because they figured LeBron James would be in the top 10 because he wasn't outside of the top 10 as we got down to the rankings, right? They had AD at 11. And we found out that LeBron was number seven. Wow. <laughs> it doesn't matter who's behind him and who's in front of them as far as players. But why the hell is this guy number seven, right? And we'll talk about that in a minute. But as you can see on your screen, last year, LeBron was number nine. He was a number nine. So they're telling us that this guy, a year later, got better. Got better. Hold on, wait. He got better. <laughs> he got older. And he got better. Did anybody see that? Did anybody see that he got better? Then the last year's rankings. Wow. <laughs> I, I try to tell you guys, this is not a real sports league. This guy is getting better or he got better from a year ago than what he was. Wow. Also, what people aren't talking about Let's talk about this. The guy that got the highest paid contract in NBA history and of any uh out of any player, any current player that's playing in the NBA, what was it like a year? Was it last year or two years? It was one of those years. This guy is not in the top ten. He's not in the top five. And he wasn't when he got that all time contract making him the highest paid player of all time and the highest paid player out of current NBA players in the league. He wasn't a top 10 player at that time, and he wasn't a top five player at that time, and he still isn't. What the hell is going on? Who am I talking about? I'll give you five seconds. Jalen Brown. <laughs> Jalen Brown, the highest paid player. I don't know if he is now. But he set the table and set the bar for the rest of these guys to ultimately make more than him. And this guy wasn't even a top 10 player at the time. How does that make any sense? How does that make any sense right here? How does that make any kind of sense that Jalen Brown got that contract? Wasn't a top 10 player then and still isn't a top 10 player now. And you want me to actually <laughs> not crunch one bro? Uh, can you say you want me to crunch one brain cell to believe that this is a real professional league? You don't. Uh, you don't want me to crunch no brain cells at all. That's how they come at their fans. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, look, there's a lot of guys out here that have channels and they're just going along with this get along type of NBA, right? And I'm talking about 80s and 90s fans. They're just going along with this script so they can make money because they do not want to expose the NBA as being a fake sports league, right? Scripted. They don't want to do it. Why? Because it will mess up their money. They're making money on, e uh, on, on YouTube going along with the script, but they know this is not a real sports league. And I don't blame them. But for a guy who isn't monetized, we don't care. We don't care to point out the obvious. You don't have to go to be a rocket science. You don't have to be Einstein. You don't have to go to school and get a doctrine. You don't have to be a science professor. You don't have to be highly intelligent. My dog could have figured out this, right? A four-year-old child could point this out that it makes no sense at all when you start uh, putting together the puzzles of these guys sitting at a desk wearing makeup <clears throat> and doing all this stuff once they retired after they got a hundred million dollar contract 
after they made 200 million during their career. I don't give a damn if they only made 50 million in their career. Ain't no damn way. I'm going to play 12, 13, 15 seasons of my life. Retire. You guys know what that is? Truthfully, do you know what? These guys have been playing basketball probably in middle school, definitely high school, college, and then the pros. You know how much that takes out of you on an everyday basis? Running up and down the court, uh, uh, practicing, traveling, doing all this stuff to make tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. And you're trying to tell me after they retire, they got to sit there and get podcasts and put on makeup and read from a script. It's not that easy. People think they, they when you go on TV, you just don't show up on TV. Right. Some of these guys, you know, they got writers, they got editors. They got to read these scripts and get it right. They got to be at work. They just don't show up when it's time for work. <laughs> My time is at seven o'clock to be on air. No, they got to be there in practice and do all this stuff and fine tune, blah, blah, blah. But you're trying to tell me that these guys make all this money and when they retire, they have to go back to work. OK, OK, let me let me break it down a little bit more for you, just so if you don't understand it. So. It's not a comparison on how many years because, you know, it's different when we talk about the average person working until they're 65 compared to these athletes. But you can compare it because we're not making that kind of money. They're making money to set up for forever. That's why they play all these years. Right. That's why they want to go to the NBA. That's what we've been told to make tens of millions and hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars. So in comparison, you work all your life. Right. You got a good job. And I'm just saying this for, you know, people who, you know, have careers and, and, and careers, right? College, you know, they got a license or they went to college, got a degree and they got great jobs. So you work basically at your job until you're about 64, 65, whatever age you want to retire in your 60s. Right. So you retire. Right. And it, it's time to retire. You don't gave all you could at your job. So you retire and you got, you know, uh, tens of thousands of dollars in the bank, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank. And guess what? Now you got Social Security coming. You got a pension coming. You might have a 401k going by the time in. Maybe you paid off your house. Maybe you didn't. You got all this stuff going for you. It's time to retire and be relaxed. Suddenly, <laughs> for some reason, you have all this money saved up to retire and you have to go back to work. Not at your same job, right? But at a different job that's less than the job you was even at, right? That's what we're comparing to. These guys go and sit at a desk, do podcast, do all this stuff, right? So this will be the comparison. You do a job lesser than what your job was that, that makes less money. Let's say you're working at Walmart or Burger King or, you know, maybe you're doing roofing now. What? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you guys, this makes no kind of sense at all. What we're seeing. Right. And, you know, since the since this whole podcast thing, since, you know, you can go on YouTube and make money. Here comes these NBA players, ex NBA players trying to make money, trying to make money. They're supposed to look, go look at some of these guys contracts during their career. What happened to all this money? I don't understand. I'm just saying there's no way I would get up and do this stuff if I supposedly got paid all this money. And you see these guys again. We talked about this yesterday. You see NBA players doing what now? Current NBA players. They're on podcast. They're on podcast. What's the number one reason why you would be on a podcast? Well, to make money. Nobody's going to do none of this stuff for free. It's not like that. These podcasts, it takes time to do it. The, the type of podcast that they have editing. Most of them are scripted like Gilbert Arenas. Have you ever seen this guy? This guy is the most scripted dude, right? He'll be on his podcast acting some type of way. And then you'll see him on Gay Shay. Shay Shay, I'll call it Gay, gay Shay, or he'll be on something else. I see him in, in different interviews. He'll be acting different. So when he's on his podcast, he's playing this character, right? That's what he's doing. He's playing this character, right? He's a scripted dude. There's nothing real about this guy. He don't believe anything that's coming out of his mouth, but he knows if he gets in his gold debate and sides with LeBron James, right? He can make a lot of money. Right. He saw what Nick Wright was doing. He saw what um, Shannon Sharp was doing. The same dude that calls um, Michael Jordan black Jesus. The same guy that says when he sees Michael Jordan, he's in awe. He just sees this aura around him. He's going crazy. He's never, you know, one to go on his knees for any man. But he's trying to tell you LeBron is the greatest player of all time. 
Michael Jordan never did nothing that I know of that was godlike off the damn court. So what made, you know, Michael Jordan godlike was on the court. His his play on the court, right? Not do you see any godlike um play that you would call LeBron a god? No. But Shannon Sharp does. Shannon Sharp is in awe when he sees Michael Jordan. He don't even seem real, man. He don't even seem real. Why? Why? Michael Jordan never did nothing off the court that made him have that kind of status. It was on the court, right? Michael Jordan is known as the greatest <laughs> athlete of all time, right? The greatest professional sports player of all time, right? And we talked about the other day that, you know, when we ha he had opposing the other team's crowd, the opponent's crowd cheering for this guy. This was crazy. 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. Now, it, it, it kind of like reduced once we got to the 90s when Mike started getting rivalries and stuff like that, and he started getting a better team. But everybody knew Mike was doing this by himself. Mike, everybody knew that Mike was the underdog. Everybody knew in the 80s. Everybody knew Mike had no physical advantages over his opponents, right? Except for his skill, his will, his commitment, his, his, all this stuff to being the greatest basketball player of all time. And it wasn't fueled because he woke up and said, I want to be the greatest of all time, per se. It's because who the hell was in front of him? Right? As the greatest players of all time. Didn't come with stats. He knew about Bird. He knew about Magic. He knew about Kareem. He knew about Wilt Chamberlain. He knew about Jerry West and Oscar Robinson. This dude was in all of what they did. Right? Iceman. He was in all of them. So he wanted to be as good as them and to be the greatest of all time. He wanted to be better than them. Right? So he worked on his game to show that. It wasn't no media kissing your butt back then saying, oh yeah, he, he you know, he, he great just because he great. Or he put up some stats. No. He put in the work. It was showed, shown on the court that he was the greatest of all time. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, these announcers in his second season, and I think some in his first season, if you watch these games, and we're blessed because it's some guys on YouTube that have just about all his 80s games, right? The entire games, not just highlights and stuff like that because you don't really understand or get to see how great Michael Jordan was with highlights. A lot of his highlights are dunks and, and you know crazy moves to the basket. That doesn't show his game. It shows how great he was as a guard going against trees and these big players and stuff like that. But it doesn't show how great of a shooter he was. And that's what they were, you know, going crazy about. This guy was shooting lights out all over the damn court. Couldn't be stopped. Wasn't getting on the free throw line, missing free throws and clutch moments or uh, during the game. I was watching this. It was like Kobe's top 15 plays and Kobe uh, was going against all these teams and stuff like that. Majority of them was without Shaq. And I think this was like 06 or something like that. It was the Smush Parker years or whatever like that. It might have been seven or eight. No, it was early because they was playing the Cavs. And I seen, um, who did I see on there? I think Eric Snow was on there. I forget this guy's name. Light skin. I, th I think he was a forward. I think he came out of Kansas. I forget his name. But it, it, it was the Smush Parker years. And I think uh, Kwame Brown was in there or something like that. Anyways, they were going back and forth. It didn't show the whole game. It showed like five minutes. And LeBron's team was hitting key baskets, getting key rebounds, and Kobe was hitting all the damn clutch shots. So it came down to under a minute, and Kobe hit a clutch shot with, like, I think it was, like, 10 seconds to go or something like that. And now it was LeBron's turn because the Lakers went up. And LeBron came down there, and what did he do? Of course, he drove to the basket, did some little double clutch thing, and they called a foul. It wasn't no damn foul, but they called it. Remember, that was the time where they got rid of you couldn't really play defense. So he goes to the line. And it was, it was pretty much over. If he hit those two free throws, it was pretty much over. Guess what? He hit the first free throw, missed the second one. Of course he did. But guess what? Guess what? That guy I'm talking about from Kansas, he got the damn rebound, and they got another chance, and they missed the shot. I don't think LeBron – yeah, LeBron did shoot the shot. He missed the shot, and then Kobe came down, hit a shot, and that was LeBron's turn. And he, he uh, guess what? He missed the mid-range shot, and the game was over. And they was all dapping, both of the teams. His ass walked off the court. That's what he does. He's a sore loser. He's a sore loser. Never seen a guy like that, a sore. This was like a regular season game, and this guy was acting like this. 
Dude, you're not Kobe. You're not Jordan. You're not Iverson. You're not Tracy McGrady. You're not these players that can hit these mid-range shots. And Kobe was shooting these three-point shots and killing them. So, let, let's get back on topic right here. <laughs> so, yeah, this guy is a top seven player in the league right here. What, what does that say? It says that the league is not only not a real sports league, but it shows, it keeps showing us how weak this league is. A guy that's 40 years old with no with no jump shot, with no paint work, doesn't play defense, can't shoot free throws, walks out of games, and all this stuff, hasn't won an MVP <laughs> in his 30s, haven't been on a defensive team in his 30s. Just, just imagine that. Even in, let, let's get out of the two teams. We know that was, you know, it, the, the defense wasn't that good. That's when it really started to decline. We can give an exception to the 2000s because we still had like a lot of 90s guys in there. And even though they cut out defense, these guys still want to play defense. They still want to play defense, right? But now, by the time we got to the 210s, it was really lax, right? Especially um, after the Tim Duncan left and, you know, these guys got older. Uh, what's the name? Dirk got older. Not saying Dirk was a great defensive player or nothing like that. But I'm just saying some of these guys were phasing out, right? Defense was, it was basically non-existent, right? And then we're getting into the 2020s. It's basically a joke. It's basically a joke. Guys patting each other on the back. Get your stats so we can get these contracts. <laughs> this type of stuff, right? They done turned it into a, uh, what do you call it? Like sports and fitness ranch likes to say a gimmick game. It's a gimmick. It's not a real sports league. Uh, he didn't say that. I said that. But it, it, it's just not a real sports league, right? So, we can say, come on, man, in 2020, 2020, you're trying to tell me this guy, LeBron James, in the weakest defensive era of all time, of all time, couldn't make a defensive second team? A defensive second team. <laughs> Just to make a defensive team in this era, all you have to do, you don't have to be a great defender. Just show an effort. That's Rudy Gobert. You're just showing an effort. Right, we got four defensive player of the year. It never averaged three blocks a game. In some seasons, never even averaged two blocks a game when he gets his defensive player of the year. It's a travesty, right? What what are we talking about? And LeBron can't make. So you're trying to tell me, since he won his uh, last the uh, last defensive team, he was on the defensive team last. What was it? 2014. He was on the second team. You're trying to tell me, for ten years, it was somebody better at his position. My fault. Two people better at his position because it would be a first and second team. Two people better than him at his position in defense. In the weakest defensive era of all time. Wow. <laughs> Especially in the 2020s. Wow. Wow. So you're trying to tell me it was somebody since 2013. We could say 14, really, since he, he, he won it in 13. Since 2014 until 2024, it was somebody better than him in the league who won MVP? Huh. Wow. <laughs> and if we take it a little bit further, right? We can go to statistical titles. All these guys that stood in front of him and won a since he won the um, 2008 scoring title, there's been, so, what's that, 14 years? If I'm not mistaken, it's been a guy for 14 years that have, has won a scoring title over this guy? <laughs> How could that be? He said this guy's the greatest scorer of all time. And then he's one of the greatest passers of all time. But it took him all those years just to win an assist title? It took until 2020 for this guy to win an assist title. Mr. Ball dominant. Wow. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, he don't care about these things. There's somebody that won a rebound title over this guy who coming into the two tens was the biggest guy. Right. Physically in the league since the two tens. And he's never won a rebound title. Wow. Wow. Huh. I, but what does that tell you? He don't care about no scoring title. He don't care about no assist title. He don't care about no rebound title. You know what he cares about? He cares about that 27-7-7. Seven, seven, seven. Once he gets that, 
nothing else means nothing to him. He's not trying to play full throttle like that, right? We talked about that before, right? Him always, him always making the play in. What does that tell you? And we look at, you know, his team. His team is legit. They should be a top five team in, in, in the West. No problem. Top five team in the West. No problem. But what it is, I've told you guys before, his team cannot play full throttle during the season because he doesn't have it like that, right? To be a top five team in the West, guess what? Even in the weakest defensive era of all time, you still have to put up a defensive effort to be in that top five in the West. Still. Still, right? You have to put up some type of defensive um, effort on a night in and night out basis, probably in the East too, right? If you would be a top five team in the East, but to be a top five team in any um, East or West conference, you would have to put up a defensive error, a defensive effort. But guess what? His team cannot do that, right? His team cannot do that because it would mean not only would they have to do it, he would have to do it, right? So he doesn't have that, right? <laughs> he don't have that type of energy. The only energy he has is to get that 27, 7, and 7. We can make the play in, right? And that's it. And we can threaten teams once we get into the play in because we have a good team that's good enough to be a top five team if we played with a defensive effort. But we have LeBron James on the team. We can't do that. This guy don't have that type of motor. He really has never had that type of motor, really. He really hasn't. Look, look at when he went to um he, he went to Cleveland and he went to Miami. He had the number one seed uh on each of those teams one time. One time he had the number one seed with those super teams. Handpick, you know, those, those great teams. That in that time he went to the finals eight straight times and only had the number one seed one damn time. Michael Jordan will be embarrassed. Kobe Bryant will be embarrassed. <laughs> and like players. Of their elk, right? They would be embarrassed to have that embarrassment of riches and not have the number one seed. It would be embarrassing. But look, it just shows the effort on a night in and night out basis. Guys, it's chill, man. This, you know, we, we, we chill, man. We ain't got to put up that kind of effort, man. You know, we already got a good team, man. And, you know, once we get to the playoffs, man, we, we just turn it on, right? That's the LeBron James mentality, right? That goes, that co coincides with the with the play-in. Oh, man, we ain't going to play this season, man. We just going to slack off, man. That, that's too much effort, man. We might get hurt, man. You know, we, we need to be, you know, drinking this whiskey after the game and, you know, messing around, having fun, man. Let them do all the do all the work. Let them try to get the number one seed, the number five seed, something like that. We got the play-in, man. That That's <laughs> – I'm trying to tell you. There's no way with this team, with Anthony Davis, right, two top 75 players, all NBA players, he, he's a defensive – um, he's on the defensive team, AD, and you got all these good shooters around you, good shooters, and they just got connect. They just got connect. So he's going to be another good shooter on that team. They're probably going to shit sit, um, what's the name? Hachimori, or did they trade him? I, I think they traded him. Probably better for him anyway, right? He can continue his career and, and not try to be a scapegoat for the LeBron James kingdom, right? So he, he, he can continue his, his career, you know, because well, when you're caught up in that mess, it's just a circus. So, th this is what you got, man. You saw what they did, right? And the, the, the play-in, what happened? They turned it on. They turned it on in the play-in. Once they found out they had to play nobody, nobody. And remember, all these teams that they played, up until they played them, they were putting up good stats. They were playing good, right? Their opponents were playing good in the tournament. Once they played the Lakers, hmm, they seemed to play awful, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from this NBA? Are, are we supposed to watch this stuff? Because we already know nobody's watching it, right? It's got the, the 2020s, got the lowest ratings in NBA history in the regular season, the playoffs, the, the finals, you know, holiday games. Nobody's watching this stuff. But they're trying to tell you these guys are not showing up to work. I was saying that against uh, uh, to two raw for TV today. He was talking about Kawhi Leonard. He is going to start the season on the bench. And I'm like, how is this guy? I don't know. He hasn't even been playing. He set out during the playoffs for the most part. Set out much of the season last year. No summer league. Uh, uh, he didn't play in the Olympics. He didn't play in the preseason. How is he hurt if he's not playing? How do, how do you get hurt if you're literally not playing? I don't know. <laughs> I, somebody 
explain that to me. How did you get hurt if you're not playing? And if you're hurt, show up on the damn court after you're making all this money and be wrapped up in a damn bandage and hobbling and show, show these people that you messed up, man. Show them you messed up. Don't show back up to the court like you do, looking like it ain't nothing wrong with you. And then after 20 damn games, you, they say, oh, man, he ain't playing the next game. He suffered an injury. What? <laughs> what did Patrick Ewing play like six years with busted up knees? This guy had knee pads on. Literally. He had knee pads on that, that people who lay carpet, those type of knee pads. He had knee pads on. So you won't bump his knees. And so he could run up and down the court. These guys played with injuries. Scottie Pippen played with a back injury. Michael Jordan played with messed up toes and Kobe Bryant messed up fingers and all, all this type of stuff. Wilt Chamberlain was hurt his last, what, four or five years. What, what are these guys talking about? I don't understand. Because you're trying to tell me that these guys say, and, and, and when I'm looking at it, and I tell you these guys don't make this kind of money, if I'm, if, if I'm a player, right, and if I'm not making that kind of money that the fans have been lied to about, of course I'm going to sit out. Why am I going to play injured? Why am I going to do all this stuff if I'm not even really making this kind of money? Right? So I guess they have a right not to even damn play because they're not making this money anyways, right? <laughs> and, the, and the money that they really are making, they got to find some way to stay healthy to make that kind of money. Kawhi Leonard would have been cut. Cut by the NFL for these shenanigans. And most of these guys that are low management doing all this stuff, the NFL would have cut their ass. It would have been over. It would have been over. The NFL would have cut them. You know the NFL don't play. The NBA is the only workplace where you can show up. I mean, don't show up. The only workplace where you don't show up and you still get paid. Let me run it back. The NBA is the only workplace where you don't have to show up and you still get paid. That's insane. And it's so abusive now with these guys. And it's been for a long time now not showing up to work and still getting paid. How do these owners have this money, really, to pay these guys for not being there? I don't understand. They could look their fans straight in the face and say, we're going to charge you all this money for popcorn, hot dogs, alcohol, um, parking, tickets, all this stuff. Why? Because we got great players. But sorry, folks, they don't play. How's that? <laughs> it's like your job, right? The people who buy your product, this is how you're going to treat them, right? Right? The people who purchase your products, right? This is, this is what you're going to do to them. I, I, I don't know. Let's say you sell. I don't know what you want to sell. Say you sell ceiling fans. I don't know. And the consumer, and you have great ceiling fans to sell the consumer. And they come to buy them. And you say, thanks for the money. Sorry, we don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, man. You can't make this stuff up. Sorry, I don't have the ceiling fan, but thanks for the money. Maybe I'll have it in the future. <laughs> or, you know, you just give some of your customers, you know, a ceiling fan whenever you have it, but you still keep the customer's money. This is ridiculous. This, and it's, 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 I'm, I'm just trying to tell you, it's starting, it's a, it's concrete evidence that these guys don't get paid this money. That is just entertainment. You're taking your chance with this entertainment that they're giving you. Sometimes you got to use common sense. They're promoting a 40-year-old lack of skill having, no back having LeBron James as the seventh best player in the league. But why? So they can sell his jerseys. So they can keep, um, keep it going in L.A. Keep the ticket prices high. Keep the popcorn prices high. Keep the alcohol prices high. Keep the merch prices high. Keep the parking prices high. And how does this work? How, how, do, how do they get away with some of this stuff, right? Because they could never get away with it in the 80s and 90s. These fans won't show up. Barkley, Bird, Magic, Carl Malone, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, um, 
uh, uh, slew of these guys. Your best players from your team in the 80s and 90s are not playing. They're not showing up. They're load managing. You know what would happen? You know what would happen. These teams would not be making no money from the damn fans. Let alone viewership. They won't be getting that at all. But the fans are, were not dumb back then. The fans were not dumb back then. We're not going to pay for this crap. We're not going to show up. Why, why am I going to pay for these tickets? Why am I going to pay season tickets? And these guys are Jordan, uh, all these guys, Bird, Magic, Kareem, <laughs> Dr. Dr. J played in the 80s, Dominique Wilkins, it, we're all 90s guys, 80s guys. They're not showing up. They're not playing. 80s and 90s people. Or 80s and 90s fans were not dumb enough to say, yes, we're still going to pay for this trash. But <clears throat> for some reason, these fans in this era, they stand for it. They're dumb enough to actually um, show up to these games and watch these games of these players not showing up. You know why? We've already told you before. These are not real NBA fans, folks. They're not. All the NBA fans... The real fans left a long time ago. LeBron chased them away. A lot of them. And then a lot of them saw what the game was about. It's not real NBA basketball. It's not American basketball. These are not real NBA fans that are going to these games. They're not real fans. Right? These ex-NBA players that we do here, taking up for these players today, they're not, they're not telling the truth. Or the coaches of how good these players are, but they need a paycheck. You've been dissed and told that your era was trash. The guys weren't skilled and all this stuff, and you would actually accommodate the NBA to say how good these players were after they're literally trashing your era? These aren't real NBA officials. Let me tell you, folks, we had legendary officials in the 80s and 90s. For the most part, we knew their name. It was always at least one or two at these games that we knew their name, right? They were legendary because they did not take any crap and they called it like it was. How many great officials or memorable officials can you name today? We knew our officials back then. They didn't take they didn't take nothing. They would tee you up. They would call travel carry, all this stuff. So I, I don't know what else to say. It just it just keeps getting worse for the NBA. And now you got ex players coming out and say it's basically WWE. It's just entertainment. And where are you gonna go next once LeBron retires? Because you done exhausted this narrative for so long through these fake Fake analysts on ESPN. Fake. We didn't have fake analysts back then on ESPN. We had professional analysts. That's what we had. We had the best. We didn't have fake sports centers, uh, fake sports center guys on there, um, doing doing play by play after the game or doing highlights. My fault. These were legendary guys. <laughs> they were legendary guys. Everybody, look, man. These games, these, these people in the eighties and nineties were legendary. Whether in pop culture, we're talking about sports, music, movies, fashion. You saw how you saw how, how they conduct themselves in politics. Now it's a joke. It's like entertainment. It was no joke back in the day. It was straight face. It was real. They made you believe that they was all about the people. Right. That's what they that, that's this is just a joke in this era, man, because everything is about entertainment. There's nothing real about this era. It's, it's getting bad. You got fake people on YouTube who ain't real. Will look you right in the face and tell you straight lies. About what they're talking about on their channel. Ain't nothing real about it. And we won't even get too deep into that, but we'll, we'll stay in the NBA. It, it, it's just it's sad, man, that these kids don't get the, you know, grow up living in reality no more it's just a whole it's fake it's fake this world has become a fake place to live that's all it is 
So you, you guys tell me what you think, man. I'm just, I'm just a top seven dude for what, man? It's just, I'm done.